Let's get our planners ready for September. <laughs> As always, there is lots going on today. I will show you what I created in my August signature. I will introduce my new kit for September called Secret Garden. We'll start setting up in the planner for September. And finally, I have two book reviews for you, which are two very, very different kinds of books. Welcome to Plan With Me for September. It's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So let me start by showing you what I added to my August signature. I have been busy. So this is the welcome page for August. I didn't change anything there since my Plan With Me August video. On this calendar, I just added this die cut made from wallpaper. We've made this little pocket and ticket last time and I just added this embellishment on the bottom. This is a dried hydrangea with some gold splatters on it and underneath we see a net from some lemons. Then I made this collage here. This background here was from my ephemera kit from August, the Under the Sea kit. And this flamingo here is from the Extraordinary Things to Cut Out and Collage book. I will link this for you again below. Super fun cutouts for you in here with all kinds of subjects. Then here's my 10K step tracker, which looks appalling. I haven't been walking a lot at all. Again, I added some die cuts from wallpaper. So here's a little floral embellishment. And here is what looks like kind of seaweed. These are the only pages that I still have left to do. On this calendar page, I just added this cute bird. He's from a book from my Goodwill. Here I added a collage. Again, these are die cuts. And this is from my clip art from the Under the Sea kit. If you're looking for these digitals, if you're new to these, you can find these linked in my Plan With Me August video, which is in the Plan With Me playlist that you can find linked below this video. Here, another collage. This was the cute sea dragon. And this is one of my clip arts. Again, this is a die cut. And this here is a leaf I found on my last vacation at the Red Sea in June and I had to take that with me and I dried it. Here I added a wallpaper butterfly with some rhinestones in the center. I used these two that are also from the ephemera kit and I backed them to some cardstock. No, I backed them actually to some packaging paper. I sewed around them and on this one, I actually wrote some facts about the clownfish. This fact is so interesting. I have to read this to you. They live in warm waters and schools of clownfish have a strict hierarchy with the most aggressive female at the top. <laughs> All clownfish are born male, but when the dominant female dies, a male clownfish turns himself into an aggressive female clownfish to then be the new leader. That sounds like out of a fairy tale, doesn't it? These sea creatures are just so fascinating to me. So here's the other side of that envelope, which is also from that ephemera kit. And inside here, I used these two little journaling cards to make a little booklet. So I just cut them out and folded it in half, which makes a little booklet. And then I added this jar here on the front and some cheesecloth dyed with forest moss underneath. And inside, again, I wrote some information, uh, this time about my beloved orcas. So that goes in here. Here is another collage with some die cuts I had. On this page, I only added this clip art and some dyed fabric here on the bottom. Here I just added this clip art and here I had an envelope 
that I turned into a belly band because it was very hard to get something in and out from this side here. So I decided to just cut off a very thin strip on that side and now that is a belly band. And I collaged here these fun corals, which are again from the same things to cut out and collage book. So that's really fun. And I just added some turquoise splatters on top. And inside I added this smaller printout of one of my under the sea backgrounds. So this was supposed to be like a postcard because it says carte postale here. And I stamped the words greetings from the Red Sea as if I was sending a postcard from my last vacation from the Red Sea. I added this embellishment again, some more dyed cheesecloth, some more floral die cuts, some more cheesecloth and a golden sequin. And on the back, I wrote some super interesting facts about the Red Sea, which I will read you because you seem to be interested in learning as well. So I love that. And by the way, as you can see here, I added some coffee bubble dyeing on the back, which actually is really cool because do you see how it came through the paper? And that just adds to the image on the front. These bubbles add to the under the sea feeling. I just love how that turned out by coincidence. So there are several theories about the origin of the name Red Sea. One gives credit to seasonal blooms of a type of algae which make the normally crystal clear water appear a deep orange red. Some speculate it stems from the nearby red tinged mountain range called Harai Edom or from the Egyptian desert which was once known as Red Land. The world's fastest fish lives in the Red Sea. The solitary sailfish can swim at speeds of up to 68 miles per hour, which is roughly 109 kilometers per hour. Can you imagine you're in the ocean and <laughs> one of these sailfish speeds by you? Oh my goodness, you, you probably think you're dreaming, you're seeing things. <laughs> The Red Sea is approximately 35% saltier than most other seas, which gives it unique health benefits. The saline concentration is believed to improve blood circulation. It's easy for people to float in because of the high saline concentration. I, I believe it's really hard to drown in the Red Sea, even if you're not a good swimmer because you just float on your own, which is so fun. So that lives in here. And actually I made this embellishment so I can pull it out more easily. On the back side, I added a belly band made out of Tim Holtz fabric onto which I added some die cuts and added one of my turtle embellishments. And then again, another wallpaper floral embellishment with some cheesecloth and another golden embellishment on top. And inside I added two more of these, which were from the clip art. And I also made a little journaling card with the clip art of the sea turtle. And again, I wrote down some absolutely fascinating facts about the sea turtle. Maybe you didn't know all of these. Sea turtles have a similar lifespan to humans, up to 70 to 80 years. Turtles usually lay 100 to 125 eggs at a time and nest them in the sand. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. The sand temperature, and I wonder if you knew this. I definitely did not. The sand temperature determines the hatchling's sex. Cooler temperatures produce males, while warmer sand often results in females. Fluctuation in temperatures during the two-month incubation period typically result in a mix of male and female turtles. Unlike other turtles, sea turtles cannot retract their flippers and head into their skulls, making them more vulnerable to predators such as tiger sharks and orcas. <sighs> so interesting. Here I just added this clip art on top. Then I added this triangular tuck spot and this tag, both from my ephemera pack. Here I added again, just some gold embellishments as well as on top here, again, a wallpaper flower and a gemstone. And on this tab, I again just added some cheesecloth cheese and some rhinestones. 
This here is the page I created in my last junk journal snacks from last Saturday. So if you missed that and you want to hear about how you can protect these beautiful and rare sea dragons, which live on the Australian coast, please go check that out. Here I added another one of these jars with some more cheesecloth underneath. And on the final page of this signature, I made this underwater landscape. This was a page that had some markings here from a stencil to which I added some turquoise bubbles to give the impression of underwater. So I have my jar here of soap turquoise water. I will again link my bubble video for you underneath this video in case you still haven't made those you need to try those they are so versatile and fun these three jellyfish that you see here are actually from a vintage nature book so they're not from my clip art even though they look like they could be they totally fit with my theme then i added some die cuts here i know they're kind of hard to see they look like they're ocean plants then I added some dyed cheesecloth here and I added some splattering in black and in white with gesso. And then I added the under the sea, which is printed on all of the edges of my ephemera for August. And I added some dyed fabric underneath here as a page tab. So before I start adding my September pages to the next signature, let me show you everything that I have created for you this month. You say take me on a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? let's start off with making a cover page this time i have already cut out and inked up all of my pages this here is the right side of the page with the september monthly overview then i'll cut out the hello september and i really love how generic these are they can of course be used for any month because they don't have a particular theme and yet i think they go so well with this like antique theme so as you can see i'm not into the autumn vibes yet <laughs> I'm still sort of in summer mode. So this theme, Secret Garden, is inspired by like old Europe. I think you could say like Greece and Italy, Malta, traveling and seeing all these beautiful century old buildings. I myself have not been to Greece, but hopefully one day I will make it there. But I have seen plenty of antique buildings in Italy, for example. But there's lots more to see. Okay, so let me cut out September. And while I do that, I have some exciting news. Exciting for me anyway. <laughs> and I'd like to share it. In about two weeks from now, I'm going to move apartment. I'm going to stay in Vienna. 
but I'm not going to stay in the city center. There's two main reasons for this move. Uh, by the way, side notes, I'm using brushed corduroy to edge all my papers this time because this color works really well with the edges of the old paper in my digitals. So one of the reasons is that the street I currently live in, which is an area that I absolutely adore, it's super close to the very heart of Vienna. I can walk everywhere. I have everything near me and I just love the area. But the big, big, big problem for me is that it is so noisy. And not only does it disturb me at night with people walking on the street and having their car radios really loud, so much construction here all the time. It's absolutely crazy. A lot of days it is really, really difficult for me to find an opportunity to film. So that has really been a struggle. And the second thing is, which has also become a huge challenge, is you maybe know that I currently still work in my living dining room area. So this is my dining table, meaning that I always have to clear everything off because this is also where we eat when my hubby is home. And in general, like my, my whole living dining room area is by now, I would say like three fourths taken over by my craft thing. So that's not an ideal situation. So I decided it was time that I get my own craft room. <laughs> so as you can imagine, I am super excited about that. My first craft room ever. I'm just putting this on some dyed fabric. So I am super excited to get my craft room all set up. And uh, finally, I hope I can display some of my journals just for myself, you know, because I think mm, it's nice when you can actually see the work you've done and not always have to hide it in boxes and drawers. So hopefully I'll be able to document at least some of that whole process. Where do I put this down here? I think I'll put it up here or just in the middle i'll just put it up there in the middle so maybe that will be kind of like a vlog style video with the setup and everything and then of course i will give you a craft room tour when it's done next comes my monthly overview so that is one of the reasons why i'm currently only posting two videos a week instead of my usual three because there's a lot going on that we need to take care of for the new apartment for this apartment and it's going to be a struggle for at least another month so thank you for hanging in there with me and the first piece of furniture i bought for my craft room is a comfortable office chair with wheels from ikea maybe i'll post a picture here somewhere <laughs> I'm very excited about this just because at the moment I'm sitting on a wooden chair and always when I film for a longer period of time, my back starts aching. So I'm really, really happy to have a nice comfortable chair with a nice back to it that I can lean into and wheels to move around. So that'll be a nice change. But see, I wouldn't appreciate it as much as if I wouldn't have had to sit on this hard wooden chair for so many years. <laughs> I'm going to skip these two and leave them for some collaging or whatever I want to do there. Then I'll continue here with the first full week of September. I already have the end of August and the beginning of this of September in my August signature here. This goes up to September 4th. But of course that week is available in this design as well. And some of the furniture that I have currently in my living dining room area will go into my craft room. So for example, this table, the dining table I'm working on right now will be my designated craft desk because I've already kind of ruined it with all my crafting. And uh, we already got a beautiful new wooden dining table that I'm also excited about. And the fun thing is also that the house I'm going to move into is actually right next to the house where I grew up in. That was such a coincidence and it gives me such a good feeling to go back to that street and to be right next to where I grew up and to have all those memories with my family living there. It's kind of like that was meant to be. And it's super quiet there. It's a house that is in 
the second row of the street, so it's not on the street directly. Unfortunately, you have to walk up quite a bit of stairs to get to that other building where my apartment is in. But that also means that around me, I just have green and I have no noise, which is going to be such a nice change. But having said that, at the same time, I am a bit worried, or actually both my hubby and I, are a bit worried about the lack of infrastructure. I mean, you have all the necessary shops there, like the grocery store and the pharmacy and all of these things we have within minutes walking. But we are currently used to having everything here. So here, for example, I have like, I don't know, I think five different supermarkets within, let's say, eight minutes walking distance. And there I'm going to have one. <laughs> And uh, the post office is far away. I actually need to take tram and a bus. So it takes me like, I think 20, 25 minutes, which I'm really not happy about because I need the post office often. And just being able to walk out of your door and go to different restaurants and have ice cream or whatever, that's going to change. We have like, I think one place, one ice cream place and one pizza place very close to us. Oh, and the fish place. But I think that's it. So I'm totally spoiled in that way here. I just don't know yet if the peaceful surroundings will make up for the lack of infrastructure. I'm super curious how we're going to like it. And we said we'll give it a year. And in a year we'll decide if we'll stay there or if we will move back to the city. But if we do that, it will definitely have to have a craft room because I think once I have one, there's no going back to not having one. And after all, this is my full-time job. So I think it's totally justifiable. Not that I need to justify it actually. And it would have to be a more quiet place on a, in, a, in a more quiet street or that the rooms are looking out, not onto the street, but on the other side of like a garden or whatever. And it will also be easier to move next year because there's a change in the law for people renting apartments. So currently, when you rent an apartment, the renter and the rentee, is that a word, rentee? Both have to pay the company that is showing the apartment. What are those called? I forgot. But you know what I mean. They both have to pay that company once a new renter is found, which is usually two to three months of rent plus tax. So that's a lot of money. And as of January 1st, only the rentee, if that's the right word, has to pay that money. So that means it won't be such a hard decision to move again if we're not happy there. So I think this page doesn't need any more embellishments. It's full enough. Maybe let's do it for this week as well, for this next week, because I think here we will need some kind of embellishment. So let's put the to-do list up here. And the gratitude down here. And then let's have a look at our clip art to see what we could add. Could either take one of these documents. Yeah, I think I like that. Or the ticket here. No, I think I want this document here with this dark flower. And maybe I'll add some postage stamps to that. I just had another idea. I have my tin with dried flowers here. And why don't I add some of those? or at least one that could be like a flower you picked on your vacation in I'm going to say Rome now thinking of Louise <laughs> hi Louise <laughs> and then you add them to your planner or journal of course this one might be very cute for that I wish I would have thought of that before I glued these down like that so i'm just going to glue everything down i'll use my liquitex matte gel to glue these flowers down i'm so happy with this matte gel love it so that's what that looks like once it's glued down and dried i love how matte it is 
And now I also want to add something to this envelope, which as you can see is a junk mail envelope that I have partially coffee dyed. It has an opening here on the top so we can stick something in here. Now looking through my ephemera, there are several options. I don't know if you noticed when I was showing the digital versions, there's six pages of ephemera this time. I've never had that before. So I hope there's something in it for you that you will like. So either I could just stick one of these journal cards in here. I think the size would be perfect. Yep, so one of these two would go in there perfectly, but I think I want something that peeks out. So I think either one of these fun mason jars would be really cute, so that part would stick out, or one of these tags. They're also big enough to peek out. Maybe I should do the mason jar. These are coin envelopes. No, that's a huge envelope. Yeah, why don't I try the mason jar since I've never had ephemera like this before. So I've cut it out, inked it up, glued it onto a cardstock. I want to add some metallic paint to this lid. I'm going to use my Neon Color 2 Water Soluble Wax Pastels by Caran Dash. And I have this metallic bronze here. Then I want to make it a little bit darker in these outlined areas. Then I have this cut off from a tablecloth that I kept. And I think this might be the perfect opportunity to use this by tying it around my lid. So we can stick that in here. You can have the ribbon dangling out. And now I want to add something to this here. So once I'm done with this video, I think I'm going to pack up my craft supplies. At least the things I'm pretty sure I won't be needing in the next couple of days. Such a weird feeling. Since this is not wide enough, I'm also going to cut out this banner and use part of that. So I'm really happy I filmed some videos ahead so that at least I can have two videos a week without interruption. Okay, so shall we do that? Is that weird to have these flowers next to each other? Yeah, that's not ideal. I want to cover this up because it's too loud next to this calm paper. So I think I'm just going to use a plain coffee dyed paper. By the way, it was so fun seeing your reaction to my last junk journal snacks on Saturday, <laughs> where I mentioned that Louisa and I will be doing DFM Rember again. It's so cute how you're already excited. <laughs> It was fun. One comment said, 103 days to go. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> so cute. Louise and I are super excited about it as well. We are in full preparation mode and we're having a lot of fun already. So in case you missed that announcement because you didn't see the last Junk Journal Snacks video, yes, we will be doing Defember Ember again, which is a daily December series where Louise and I post videos from December 1st to 25th every single day using prompts. We have all kinds of goodies for you. We have freebies and uh, we have expanded the whole thing and we have made it more interactive so we're trying to make it bigger and better and more fun so i hope that you will join us again for that okay this i'm going to leave for another day but i think this side is fine and i can either write some notes here or put a quote here or a sentiment or something i will think about that later I'd say it's time for my book reviews. Interestingly, by coincidence, both books that I read, although very different from each other, take place in and around a house by the sea. So the first one is I Found You by Lisa Jewell. 
This was my third book by Lisa Jewell, and it centered around three separate stories lines told in alternating chapters. We first meet Alice, a single mother of three children who finds a random man sitting on the beach outside of her home and offers him a place to stay after she discovers he has no memory of who he is and how he came to the beach. Next, we're introduced to Lily, who is a very young newlywed from Russia. She has only known her husband and been living in England for a few weeks before her husband mysteriously disappears. And then we also have Gray and Kirsty, a teenage brother and sister whose tragic story told in the past occurs while traveling with their family way back in 1993. I think you could say Lisa Jewell's strength definitely lies in her ability to deliver character-driven novels. While I appreciate that a lot, the issue I have with that is that my enjoyment hinges on whether I connect with the characters and find their actions at least somewhat believable. And in this story, Alice unfortunately repeatedly makes very questionable decisions and was so desperate for attention that it made it hard for me to actually connect with her. But having said that, I did enjoy the storyline and the setting. It was an enjoyable read and it did have a very satisfying end. I gave this book four stars. And then we have a book I have heard so much about, which is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. And I think the Washington Post describes it best. Likely to cause heart swelling. I can only agree with that. It's one of these books that instantly puts a smile on your face just thinking about it. And it makes me want to hug it and carry it with me everywhere. <laughs> So Linus is a buttoned up, live by the rules, no fun employee who works for the department in charge of magical youth. When he gets his latest secret assignment from extremely upper management to visit an orphanage on a remote island, he doesn't know what to expect. But soon his assignment turns into the adventure of a lifetime, one that will touch his heart and irrevocably change who he is. This book has the most endearing characters. Everyone we meet is kind-hearted, even if they seem a bit prickly at first. <laughs> when I was first introduced to the children, I have to admit I was very overwhelmed as to what was going on and who was who. <laughs> but as I got to know them, they developed into the most lovable creatures. They learn and grow into their potential, becoming so much more than they were before. And I really loved the dry and sarcastic humor of this novel. So basically, it's a story about acceptance and seeing someone for who they are on the inside. It left me with such a warm and cozy feeling inside. And it's a definite five-star rating for me. I don't have a designated book page yet in this planner. So I will add one on the last page of my planner. I have already printed out one of these sheets. These are available for you as well in the description box, as well as obviously all the other digitals I have been working with in case I haven't mentioned that. Okay, so I'm going to add these two books here. Don't you just love it when like one of the first words you write on a new page you already spelled wrong <laughs> this is horrible what i really liked about this one is in the front here i forgot to show you there's a really cute map look so there's the whole beach area this is alice's cottage where this is taking place and these are all the places that are mentioned in the book. The beach bar, the seafood restaurant, Kitty's house, Sugar Bowl Cafe. I think this is so cute. Anyway, just wanted to share that. <laughs> so we have September pretty much ready to go. There's our intro page. We have our overview. We have half of a pocket done. We have a cute mason jar. 
our step tracker which hopefully won't look as pathetic as the one for august <laughs> and then we have our weeklies we have some dried flowers they make me happy and still lots more to add in here so i hope you enjoy this kit as well have fun planning your september love you guys Mwah, mwah. Say take me on a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance Oh, I wish it was me